Hi, and welcome back to Purple Collar Life. Today I'm at my cousin Kyle's house. We're gonna do something I've never done before. We're gonna winterize a jet ski, and we're actually gonna winterize two of them. So Kyle, what's the first one that we're gonna do? We're gonna to try to do this 2006 Kawasaki STX-15F. So this is a 2006 Kawasaki, and then the next one we'll do is a 2015 Yamaha VXR. All right, so we'll walk you through the process and then hopefully this helps you out so that you can do your machine. So the first step is going to be stabilizing the gas that's in the tank. So Kyle's put his key on so we can see about how much gasoline is in that tank. Looks like three quarters. One ounce for two and a half gallons. Let's assume maybe five ounces. Yep. Should be good. One. Two. So on this table, we think are all the supplies we need to winterize these two machines. Um, some of this Kyle already had, some of it he bought off of Amazon. I'll try to find links to all these things and put them in the description down below. So then if you need any of these things, go ahead and use those links. We'd really appreciate it. This, is your jet ski the same way? You have to turn, you have to start them and then turn the water on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oil change. Oil change. Now I do know that when I take my jet ski to navigation company, they always do an oil change whenever they winterize it. So it seems like that's pretty common practice. Yeah, I think it's because you could get some water in the oil over the okay. season. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of, well, and you're going to probably do it every year anyways. Right. And with a jet ski, there is no drain port, right? Right. That's why we're sucking out of the dipstick. Yep. So the location of the oil filter is actually down around the case. And we'll pump the oil out. Because like we said, there's no drain. So if you watch the video of us changing the oil on the Sport Nautique, there's actually a drain hose that comes out the uh, plug in the bottom of the hull. So it's nice to be able to drain out that, that bottom hull plug but on a jet ski, there is no hull plug at the bottom other than clear at the back. So the best way to drain them is to pump the oil out of the crankcase. So you can see making progress here. doesn't look too bad right here where you can see the light going through it. It's still pretty brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'll want to keep track of how much oil mm -hmm. we take out. And it looks like this pump you got from Amazon does have measurements on the side and liters and quarts on the other side. Nope, liters on both sides. Okay. They make electric versions of these, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> so if I take my jet ski to a place that winterizes it, it's about $130. Okay. What do you think you have in cost? Um, what did I, 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 I'll have to look. I don't know what I paid for the oil and filter kit. I'm thinking it was about 40 bucks. This was, I think, 60. Yep. The pump was 60. Oil change was 47. Okay. The, so that the so about 107, but you'll use the pump again right. every year, and you're using it on multiple machines. So. Right. I can hear it dripping now. And then the pink stuff in the jug, that's the same, like, RV antifreeze you'd use yeah. in the camper. Yep. I just had that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, I don't know if you... Yeah, you, you probably are doing the same. You can almost reuse it if, right. you, if you capture if it. Safe. And I think once it's gone, it probably just keeps, at least as you're, if you're 
draining to a lower point, yeah. it should just keep siphoning out. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that, I mean, it makes sense that you wouldn't have much of an option for a low point drain, but yeah, to think, hey, let's just suck the oil out of the dipstick hole. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And what's, we think there's probably four quarts in there. Yeah, I've read that that's probably the maximum it will take, okay. and you may only get three or three and a half out of it. Mm -hmm. So you have to just put less back in. Oh, it's low. Okay. It's like quarter of a tank. And this is a uh, 18 gallon, I think. Do you use any battery tenders through the winter? I do. Have you seen, they make like a small permanent mount one? Uh -huh. There's, yeah, so you would like, I don't know if it makes sense on a jet ski, but tractor uh, or side Well, I have side. one on my motorcycle that's mounted right to the battery all the time. Yeah. And it's just a little plug that you attach to it. Yeah, that's that's real s slick. They're like 40 bucks. Yeah. And you just plug into a outlet with mm -hmm. it. So we pulled over four quarts, almost four and a half quarts out, and it took about 40 minutes to pull through the small tube. So you'll need some patience. And in the meantime, Kyle stabilized the Yamaha and he warmed it up for the oil change on it. It's pretty dark, to be honest. It does. Okay, so getting the filter out required being on the driver's side of the machine and reaching carefully. Okay, so to recap the process so far, step one was to warm up the engine, step two was to drain the oil, step three was to replace the oil filter, step four was to refill the oil into the crankcase, and step five was to run the RV antifreeze through the engine while it was running. The next step will be to fog the engine.
Yeah, I'm just going to spray in this hole here. Yeah, because it looks like that feeds the left hand side that goes over yeah. to the intake. So on the wave runner, there's that little connector, right? Yep. And that was it already connected when you opened this up, or where did you where did you find that? Where do you keep it? No, I keep it in my dash okay. console there. Yeah. I think this is fairly common now that uh, newer jet skis have a quick connect. A quick connect, and this one conveniently has a has a ball valve because you want to mm -hmm. be timely with your water. Ideally, I think you'd want to see some pink come out the Red one, it was awkward, but uh -huh. you were able to get a hand on it. And yeah. Okay, they're both cylinder fogged, oil changed, oil filter, stable, fuel stabilizer. Antifreeze through the and antifreeze water system. The cooling. I'm going to research though. Maybe I'll even call a, a boat yeah. and see how critical it is that you get water out the front port, mm -hmm. or antifreeze out the front port. So one Kawasaki, one Yamaha, winterized. What would you think, Kyle? What was, how was the process? I think my expectations were met. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't difficult. Just took some time to get the oil out. A little bit of trouble getting you know, the filters mm -hmm. moved, but... I'd probably drive more than two hours to take it to a service center, so. Right. Yep. I think having seen you do yours now, that gives me the confidence to at least try mine and see how it goes. The, the process itself isn't difficult. Oil change is probably something you should do every year anyway, so, you know, that's at least half of the process, and you're set for next year now when you put them in the water. Yep. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up, leave comments down below, and we'll see you again the next time. I like that reverse lever. It's it's better than having to clunk. Yeah, it's kind of, you have to turn the opposite way to do it.